You've probably seen videos on YouTube ranking engineering majors from easiest to hardest. Something that looks like this. I'm sick and tired of these rankings. They're neither objective nor helpful to you in any way. So we're gonna throw all these rankings out the window. Now, I know you're watching this video because you just wanna know which mechanical engineering subfield or branch is right for you or which one is the hardest so you can avoid it or challenge yourself. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, aerospace is the hardest, automotive is the easiest, and robotics falls somewhere in the middle. Ranking mechanical engineering subfields without knowing who you are is meaningless because everyone is different. Your personality, your comfort level with uncertainty, your interests, and the way you think all shape what you find easy or hard. It just wouldn't make sense. And honestly, I have no right to rank these subfields from easiest to hardest as if it's the same for everyone. The real question is, which one will be hardest or easiest for you based on who you are and what each subfield actually demands? I don't know you personally, but by the end of this video, with everything you know about yourself and what I show you about each subfield, you'll be able to make a well-informed decision grounded in facts and reasoning and not these useless internet tier lists. If you don't know me, I got my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Boston University. I switched majors from biomedical to mechanical during my sophomore year after hearing a lot of stories from friends and professors. Afterwards, I went on to get my master's in mechanical engineering from Tsinghua University and the automotive engineering department. Then I went on to work in the commercial electronics and tech industry, developing products like automatic flush valves, hand dryers, and iPhones. I worked with just about any kind of engineer you can think of from around the world. So I have a pretty good idea of the challenges and the nature of each subfield in mechanical engineering. Now, before we dive in, I'll briefly mention that each of the subfields has different roles for mechanical engineers related to design, computer-aided engineering, manufacturing, quality, and so on. So first, we'll be looking at the primary subfields as a whole, what makes them challenging in their own ways, and some real-world problems you might solve in each role. We'll be talking about aerospace engineering, automotive engineering, tech and consumer electronics, robotics and mechatronics, medical device and biomedical engineering, and energy, oil, and gas. For each subfield, we'll cover some of the uncertainties you'll face, the skills required, and finally, the risks and responsibilities. So aerospace engineering involves the design, analysis, testing, and manufacturing of things that fly, aircraft, spacecraft, missiles, and UAVs. Think products like an Airbus 350, SpaceX Starship, or Dragon, or even consumer products like the DJI Mavic 4. It integrates advanced knowledge and fluid and aerodynamics, materials, thermodynamics, mechanics, lightweight structural design, propulsion systems, and operation under extreme conditions. You could be designing wing structures for lift and weight, fuselages to handle pressurization cycles, choosing materials that withstand extreme temperatures during re-entry or supersonic flight. For computer-aided engineering roles, you could be performing finite element analysis on wing spars, computational fluid dynamics simulations for aerodynamic drag reduction, and thermal analysis for engine nacelles. For manufacturing roles, you could be developing processes for carbon fiber composites and implementing precision machining and assembly techniques to achieve exceptionally tight tolerances. For quality roles, you might ensure quality assurance processes meet rigorous aerospace standards for safety, reliability, and performance, and maintain compliance with quality management systems like AS9100. In aerospace, uncertainty revolves around ensuring safety critical performance in extreme conditions. Components have to operate reliably despite large temperature swings, pressure differences, dynamic loading, and unexpected environmental factors. Because failure isn't an option here, systems are designed with built-in redundancy to maintain functionality in the event that individual components fail. In terms of skills, strong spatial reasoning, and proficiency in multi-physics analysis, combining mechanics, aerodynamics, material science, and thermodynamics, as well as meticulous attention to detail are required. You'll need 
systems level thinking to understand how small design choices can cascade into large scale complex performance impacts. Lastly, a good thing to note is that the risk and responsibilities involve working on systems where lives are at stake. You might find this exciting and deeply motivating or overwhelming. There have been a lot of accidents throughout aviation history. So ask yourself, would this stress you out or would it motivate you to bring your best work every day? Automotive engineering encompasses the design, development, testing, and manufacturing of vehicles from conventional sedans and trucks to electric and autonomous vehicles. Some products you'll get to work on include Tesla Model 3, Ford F-150, and Waymo One. It integrates mechanical design with systems engineering, electronics, and controls to create safe, reliable, and efficient transportation solutions. For design roles, you could be developing crashworthy vehicle structures that protect occupants during impacts or designing suspension systems for ride comfort and handling. For CAE roles, you might conduct detailed crash simulations to predict impact behavior or study the thermal behavior of battery packs in electric vehicles. For manufacturing, you could be developing welding and joining techniques and processes for dissimilar materials like aluminum and steel. For quality roles, you might ensure that welded joints in a vehicle chassis consistently meet strength and dimensional specifications across thousands of production units. You could also focus on controls such as work with electrical and software teams on advanced driver assistance or ADAS systems for sensor integration and mechanical interface requirements. Uncertainty centers around ensuring every vehicle leaving the factory performs safely and reliably despite production and material variations, all while meeting aggressive cost and timing targets. You really need to have an optimization mindset to balance cost, performance, manufacturability, and compliance, and integrate mechanical, electrical, and control systems to ensure designs are safe, reliable, and scalable for high volume production. Failure can lead to recalls costing billions or even worse, safety incidents. So ask yourself, do you thrive under pressure of getting things right at scale? Now in the tech and consumer electronics subfield, mechanical engineers develop laptops, smartphones, tablets, and wearables, focusing on compact, high performance designs that integrate seamlessly with electronics. Think products like the Apple iPhone or Samsung Galaxy, virtual reality headsets like MetaQuest, and the Lenovo ThinkPad. You could be designing an ultra compact aluminum chassis of a MacBook or iPhone that protects internal components, manage heat dissipation for processors and batteries, and selecting materials that balance durability, weight, cost, and aesthetics. For CAE roles, you might perform dropped impact simulations to ensure devices survive real world use and thermal simulations for effective cooling of densely packed electronics. For manufacturing roles, you might ensure designs can be mass produced and optimize processes for PVD coating of smartphones and CNC machining of chassis with micron level tolerances. For quality roles, you might validate manufacturing processes to ensure consistent output and manage incoming inspection criteria. Uncertainty you might face include extreme miniaturization with very tight manufacturing tolerances at micron levels coupled with rapid design cycles, cost constraints, and high consumer expectations. You need to bring expertise in design for manufacturability and assembly at scale, thermal management and materials, and be able to iterate through designs rapidly in a fast paced environment. If you enjoy working on products that millions of people will use, but under intense deadlines and dimensional constraints, then this is probably a good fit for you. There's a constant push for innovation, so the pace might be draining for you if that's not your cup of tea. However, the pay for tech jobs is amongst the highest for mechanical engineers. Robotics and mechatronics focus on designing and integrating mechanical systems with electronics and software to create things like industrial robot arms, autonomous warehouse robots, surgical robots, and robotic vacuum cleaners. Robots, whether fully autonomous or semi-autonomous, allow complex tasks to be performed more efficiently and safely. Some real products you can work on include Boston Dynamics Spot, DaVinci SP Surgical System, Amazon's Warehouse Mobile Robots, and Fanuc LR Mate. You might design a robotic arm to achieve required reach, payload capacity, and degrees of freedom while 
now selecting appropriate actuators and sensors to meet performance specifications. For simulation roles, you could conduct dynamic simulations for motion planning and system optimization, along with stress analysis of robot links and frames. For manufacturing, you might develop processes that achieve tight tolerances needed for robotic joints, gearboxes, and sensor integration. Quality engineers might work with suppliers to resolve issues like encoder signal inconsistencies that could impact robot performance. For a controls focus role, you could develop trajectory planning algorithms to execute precise adaptive robot movements. While these roles require an electrical, software, or mechatronics background, mechanical engineers with strong controls and programming experience are eligible. In terms of uncertainties, you'll face dynamic, unstructured environments that challenge perception and decision making. You'll also integrate hardware and software to ensure real-time systems work together. You need to have a strong understanding of electromechanical design, control theory, and logical reasoning, along with hands-on experience in programming, sensor integration, and embedded systems. Errors in control algorithms and mechanical design can lead to costly downtime, equipment damage, and safety hazards in various environments. Medical and biomedical engineering focuses on designing and developing systems and devices used for diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation, such as pacemakers, prosthetics, advanced surgical robots, diagnostic imaging equipment, and wearable health monitors that improve patient outcomes and quality of life. Some products you would get to work on include Apple Watch, Medtronic Pacemaker, DaVinci XI Surgical Robot, and Philips Ingenia Elition. Mechanical design might involve selecting biocompatible materials with suitable strength and developing hip replacements that must endure complex cyclic loads and last for decades without failure. For CAE roles, you might perform fatigue analysis on orthopedic implants and simulate structural behavior in stents and catheters. For manufacturing roles, you could develop precision machining techniques for implants and implement processes compatible with sterilization to maintain device safety and integrity. For quality, you might ensure strict compliance with regulatory standards such as FDA and ISO 13485. The two main uncertainties are human safety and regulatory approval. The cost of failure can be severe injury or loss of life, demanding rigorous testing and stringent regulatory compliance throughout the product development process. For skills, you need to possess a human-centered design mindset, strong risk assessment, along with technical prowess in biomechanics, material science, and mechanical design. Your work is going to directly impact patient health and safety, which can be very rewarding and a powerful motivator. However, the heavy regulatory requirements and critical nature of the outcomes bring immense responsibility as well, so keep that in mind. Now, before we continue, one of my favorite platforms that was a game changer in helping me level up my mechanical engineering skills was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant's lessons build problem solving skills by allowing you to play with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than traditional lecture-based learning. Brilliant's lessons are crafted by professors, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google, so you learn from the best. Brilliant builds critical thinking through active learning, not memorization, so you become a better thinker. It also helps develop the habit of daily learning essential for both personal and professional growth. You can level up at home or on the go with Brilliant's interactive bite-sized lessons. One of my favorites is Brilliant's scientific thinking course that teaches you to think like an engineer by designing gear systems, physical structures, and electric and digital circuits. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild or scan the QR code on the screen or you can check out the link in the description below. You also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Moving on, energy, oil, and gas focuses on the design, analysis, and operation of equipment and systems for energy generation, oil and gas extraction, and thermal processing. Railroad products you'll get to work on include gas turbines for power generation like the General Electric LM2500, offshore oil rigs like Shell's Perdido platform, and blowout preventers like the Cameron Bob system. You might design heat exchangers, turbines, and pipelines to operate safely under extreme pressures, temperatures, and corrosive environments. You could perform thermal and fluid flow 
flow simulations for heat exchanger efficiency and structural analysis to ensure pressure vessel integrity under operating and transient conditions. For manufacturing, you might design welding processes to meet ASME Section 8 pressure vessel standards. For quality, you might review material certifications and manage supplier compliance to prevent failures in critical equipment like pipelines, pressure vessels, and turbines. Uncertainties you'll encounter include managing extreme environmental and operation conditions, material degradation over time, and critical process safety risks like fires, leaks, and explosions. For skills, you need a detailed understanding of thermal and fluid dynamics, process safety awareness, and materials and regulatory codes. In terms of risks and responsibilities, working in energy, oil, and gas carries significant environmental safety and operational risks, but also offers the opportunity to contribute to critical infrastructure and large-scale energy systems that keep society running. So that's it. This is a breakdown of the primary mechanical engineering subfields, not by which is universally the hardest or easiest, or what I think is the hardest or easiest, but instead by what each subfield demands. Everyone is different. Your comfort with uncertainty, your thinking style, your interests, these factors determine what will feel easiest or hardest for you. Hopefully you're able to combine what you know about yourself with this video to figure out what challenges you in a way that excites you rather than drains you and which subfield interests you the most. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I share what mechanical engineers actually do and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.